All right, welcome to the Dan Bedandi Show, truthradioshow.com. Uh, today's May 5th of 2019. Join with me as a special guest. Uh, she specializes in spiritual warfare, biblical aspects, and uh, also exposing the occult, much stuff like that, like I do, but better than me. Uh, she's an author and a speaker. Um, she's an uh, author of The Spiritual Quest Based on True Events. Great book. you got to check it out. And Laura, please, by all means, plug your books. And uh, this is Laura Maxwell, and today we're going to expose the Mexican witchcraft and death cults that are going on. I mean, this stuff is unreal, uh, the stuff that she was telling me. But without further ado, here's Laura. How are you doing, Laura? Hi, Daniel. Thanks for having me on the show. It's a pleasure. And um, I know me and you have been both uh, friends of John Pounders and all that from Now You See TV. And uh, now we get to connect and you know, share our experiences here. Yeah, it's been good chatting to you, you know, over the last few months and um, getting to know each other a wee bit. And um, I found it interesting that you, like myself, your past was, uh, in your journey towards truth, you also dabbled a bit in the paranormal. So we've got something in common there as well. Absolutely. And it's uh, been a long journey, man, I tell you. And, uh, but, um, so you, um, I guess you ventured down to Mexico, is that correct? And uh, with a bunch of people to help people that are... Uh, demonically possessed and um, yeah just tell us uh, you know uh, tell us uh, if you have a website for us and all that stuff then get into uh, what you've done in Mexico and the whole story what happened down there yeah my blog is our spiritual quest dot com my youtube channel is Laura Maxwell X spiritist yeah uh, basically I've been friends with a pastor in Mexico for over a year anyway and um, yeah we, you know my husband and I felt to go to Mexico so we went there February March for five weeks and and yeah we, we, we met up with that pastor and his family they were wonderful and I spoke there um, in a church as well and you know I found that it was a great place really for me to share my story of contact and spirits because although all countries have a history of honouring and communicating with spirits, few nations pay homage to the dead as much as Mexico does. Um, so yeah, and while I was there we also interviewed a woman that Pastor Peral isn't uh, introduced us to and he had helped her because she had got saved out of the deaf cult Santeria and he helped her by destroying the, the altars, the witchcraft objects in her home and casting demons out of her. So I actually interviewed her for my radio show while I was there. Daniel, I'm getting a wee bit interference on the line. I'm not sure if you can hear it or not. Oh, no, you sound perfect. You're fine. It's okay. That's Skype. They do that to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Skype, I know. Um, so, so, yeah, we met with with Maria, and she got into Santeria because she was promised it, it would help with her business, and she regarded it as a, as a kind of a white witchcraft, as it were, but... Um, turned out they kind of tricked her into the dark side, Palo Mayombe, even though she didn't ask for that. They did a ceremony where they, she, she was then bound to it and so on. Um, her story was very, very interesting. Um, and you know, the thing about Mexico is um, I find interesting that their witchcraft and their, their witchcraft markets draw many people worldwide. So, you know, their, their witchcraft markets are really so popular. Yeah. Um, and as you know, and, and I think since the release of Disney films like Book of Life and Coco, even more people worldwide are now aware of Mexico's um, varied spiritual beliefs and practices. So it's opened it up to more people who maybe had never heard of it or had never thought of trying it before. Um, I believe the media has helped to spread it. <laughs> Um, even more. So the place that my husband and I went to to uh, minister in a church there was called Querétaro and it's said to be the second witchcraft hotspot in Mexico and um, Mexico is obviously the size of Western Europe so I thought well that's quite a big claim. 
Second to that, um, sorry, first place is a place called Cape Tamaco in Veracruz, and that is known as the witchcraft capital of Mexico, the land of sorcerers. And they, um, you know, they have a blend of voodoo, shamanism, witchcraft, spiritualism, and so on. Before I go on and share uh, more, I'd like to backtrack and just say that, you know, I feel it's significant that Mexico's ancient civilizations like the Mayans and the Aztecs, the Olmec, actually lived in the area now known as Veracruz. <laughs> you oh. know, and that, that is now the top hot spot um, for the occult. So, as you know, Dan, a whole area can have a particular spiritual atmosphere that continues many generations, carries curses and so on. Absolutely, you know. So yeah, I mean, you you walked into basically a witch's brew of um, uh, occultism, if you will. <laughs> you know, like a pot full of occultism and uh, going on in Mexico. Uh, I think from Satanism to all levels of witchcraft and uh, uh, forms of uh, voodoo and everything else. I mean, it's crazy down there. I heard a lot of stories down there, but I mean, like when I was talking to you about it. Uh, it's just like unreal. Yeah, I mean, people don't realize what goes down uh, in Mexico. You know, so-called. Uh, you know, they a lot of people frown upon Mexico, say it's a uncivilized country. Most people say, well, you know, they don't understand the spiritual uh, warfare that takes place in Mexico. You know, what I mean, and um, you know, like uh, thank God for people like you uh, braving up, you know, to go down there and uh, explore what's going on and try to help people. Um, I think as well, you know, that, that like many uh, Latin American countries and, and, and Caribbean countries, the, their witchcraft over here, we would um, it would be behind closed doors. It would be very secretive if, if we had anything like that in our countries. But there, it's been such a, a part of their culture for so many generations that it's not as hidden. It's um, I'm not saying it's acceptable everywhere, but it's certainly not as hidden, not as secretive. Um, and so it's come to be um, something that they, they now see as kind of normal, um, many folks, you know. And um, I think as well, when you look at the reasons for why people do what they do, um, I think it begins to make, make sense. It's, it's not always um, for sinister purposes or, or people who are evil and, you know, trying to harm others oftentimes people are drawn into these things because of the promise of it being good um the promise of it being a helpful thing so it's interesting to to, to look at people's motives and why they get into things as well um well the thing is a lot of people are, are, are experience uh you know when i was younger too people join these things because you know, people want to be part of something. You know what I mean? They want to just, you know, they want to be part of something and do things, um, you know, different from other people. You know what I mean? So uh, the occult is a perfect example for that. And a lot of people fall into the occult because they think, all right, you know, because, it, you know, they, here's the whole thing. Most people know society lies to us. So they seek truth, they seek answers. And when the churches, you know, because they've been watered down, unfortunately, they don't give them the proper answers. They'll go seek, um, you know, turning itch and ears to uh, lives of devils and demons, you know what I mean, from the occult. Definitely. And, and a lot of times the, the folks who do get into those things, they aren't really even aware that it is the occult. Yeah. Or cults, they're not even aware, many of them, that it is actually demonic. You know, a lot of times um, folks get into things because they think there's, there's angels involved or good deities, good spirits Yep. Saints, saints and so on so you know they don't actually realize um what's demonic and, and what isn't i know that sounds patronizing but i do speak from experience as well and i put myself in that bracket when i say i didn't realize the stuff i was getting into was demonic and, and i think you know across mexico um for the majority of folks saints and angels are still very popular um uh, as you know, being a, a component of um, the, the, the Catholic faith over there, but many folks will mix it with, for example, divination or um, other spirits or so-called what they think are dead ancestors. So, so in Mexico, whether it's at church or whether it's at home, many folks will have altars to particular um, so-called saints or 
angels, uh, one that's um, very popular there is um, La Virgin de Guadalupe. And she um, basically represents the poor, the, the downtrodden people. Um, and she is believed to, also some believe her to be the incarnation of one of the principal goddesses of the Aztecs. So that's quite interesting. Um, and of course, kind of like a version of the Virgin Mary, as it were, um, some people worship her like a saint, some people more of a, a, a kind of Mary type figure and yeah basically they have other saints like their saints of animals there's san miguel archangel um, who is believed to protect you from anything including witchcraft there's various um saints that that, that, that they have there that they that they worship but as i say many of them are merging it also with the darker practices of for example santeria and Santa Merta, which um, I want to focus on in, in a moment. Um, but before that, you know, I think Mexico is is also known everywhere for the Day of the Dead, which happens around about Halloween time, as yep. you know. And, um, you know, when we arrived there at the airport, my husband and I, the first thing we saw actually was lots of skulls, very colourful skulls like masks and really colourful ceramics and so on. We saw these little skeletons that were like really quite cute and um, they were everywhere and um, not just at the airport but at the shops and our whole trip there for five weeks we saw them everywhere, very much a part of the culture and the, the famous skeleton is called La Catrina. She's become an icon for Day of the Dead, and um, she's often um, pictured along with other skeletons. And you can buy T-shirts with them on. You can buy little dolls. You know, they're just merchandise is everywhere. They have them in diorama, the little figurines in glass boxes, um, and they're really quite cute and um, just. In a sense, of, on the one hand, that Mexico, they um, revere the dead, yes, and they honour them and they worship them, they try to talk to them, but they also have that humorous side, and I think that's where La Katrina and those skeletons try to convey that humour. <coughs> yeah, and I was going to ask you a question, one of your questions there, you said when you got into Mexico, you saw the Lord heal and uh, cast out uh, demons and, uh, out of many people. And if you want to tell us about that when you get done, uh, talk about uh, your arrival there. Yes, I'll get, I'll get to that oh, okay. part as well. Um, sorry, I'm not always picking up everything you say that clearly. Um, but, yeah, and, and some folks say, you know, there's links to Mesoamerica, the Aztecs, and the, the way that, that skeletons, the, the ancient Maya, and the way they would um, represent corpses in their art and so on, the, the Lady of the Dead and the Death Goddess, you know, the, the who presided over the Aztec festivals that honour the dead and so on. Others talk about the Spanish heritage and the, the Dance of the Dead, which was a tradition to do with um, monastic orders. And it has become very popular now to dress as Katrina or other skeletons at the Day of the Dead. Uh, we saw people dressed like her um, on streets, doing like street theatre and so on. Um, and you know, the Day of the Dead, it's, again, I think a lot to do with the media, um, is now not just celebrated in Mexico, but Latin Americans living in the US, Canada. It's really, really quite spread. Um, and you know, UNESCO has said that the Day of the Dead is an important representation of the living heritage of America and the world so it's really getting more and more recognized more folks are interested in it and practicing it in their own countries not just in latin america so it's really quite interesting how things do definitely uh, spread around the world um yeah you were asking about when when we were speaking um in a church there Basically, um, I, you know, I shared my own testimony and I shared other things about um, 
the demonic and so on and how Jesus can set people free. I gave a, a kind of summary of, of the people I've known or interviewed on my shows, for example, ex-Satanists, ex-so-called alien abductees, you know, all of the different forms of, of the occult and the people who were set free from that. And then we... I gave an altar call. I think about seven people came to Jesus for the very first time. Oh, nice. Um, and there was probably about 100 people in, in that church. And when we said, you know, anybody who, who wants um, prayer ministry for healing of physical ailments or uh, perhaps curses broken or spirits cast out, anything like that, to come to the front, about 90 of the 100 people came out. Um, so Pastor Arthur Perales and I, we prayed for everyone. I think it took almost two hours and many people got physically healed of conditions, but many also got set free um, from demons from a variety of, of um, sources, you know, whether it was witchcraft, whether it was the Santeria, um, sexual demons that, that raped them and so on. You know, there was a, a wide variety. Um, and I find that interesting because I wondered how, how it would be in Mexico. When I've spoken in the UK, um, often there's about 90% of the audience will come out for deliverance. I wondered if it would differ in Mexico, but it didn't really. If anything, it was prob maybe even a little bit more that reacted. Um, uh, I think because so many people identify with spiritual warfare, they realise they need deliverance and they're keen to receive the, the touch of the Lord to set them free. So that's um, really, really quite encouraging to see that. And one thing that happened there that I've not noticed before was I don't know much Spanish, very, very little. And apparently when I was praying for people, I was praying in tongues as well. And I didn't realize, but I was actually praying in Spanish. And the pastor heard me and... and he said I was I was casting demons out in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, so, I was going to ask you about praise that. Praise God, you know, for the mm -hmm. gift of tongues. Amen. Yeah, because I was going to ask you about that because uh, I remember you said you were speaking in uh, Spanish in tongues there without realizing it, and I'm like, that's uh, that's amazing. Well, I think it, it proves as well. Many people who doubt the gift of tongues, you know, it proves that it's real. I didn't know I was speaking in Spanish. I was just praying in tongues. Um, but I was casting out demons. So, you know, obviously, the gift of tongues is very important, and I think it, it, it may encourage more Christians to use it when they hear little stories like that. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, I mean, like, people, uh, that's why I was telling people at the beginning of the show. Well, first of all, I want to apologize to people uh, that I sound like I'm in the tin can because, um, like usual, every time we go to put on a show, there's always a million technical difficulty aspects. I mean, it's crazy. It's unreal. It's like a conspiracy on its own. So sorry if I sound like I'm in the tin can or, you know, the, okay. the graphic keeps moving here. So, <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's just uh, a lot of technical stuff here. And um, this ain't my official radio show. It's my video uh, cast that goes on yeah. Facebook and uh, all my other platforms, which reaches more people than a radio, which is pretty awesome. So uh, sorry to cut you off. I just want to explain that to people tuning in. So sorry for the whole ghetto rig here we got going on. So, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, go uh, uh, right back with you're saying, uh, Laura? <laughs> yeah, awesome, and, and I should say as well, because it's like half past one in the morning here, so that's why I don't have my video set up, because we don't have decent lighting in the middle of the night, obviously, <laughs> and that type of thing, so, but yeah, so basically the, there's two main uh, death cults in, in Mexico, um, and not just Mexico, Latin America, but mostly in, in Mexico, and Santeria, the first one I'll talk about, it is very popular now, and it's it's got that blend of the, the, the worship of saints and angels, it, they kind of a mix, however, Catholicism with this Santeria, which is basically voodoo and black magic, although, again, as I say, a lot of folks who do it won't even realise that, and that's the sad thing, but that is what it is, because... It originates from um, African countries and it originates from, obviously, the, the, the slave trade and, and so on when you take it back. And Cuba is very big 
in Cuba too. So it's an Afro-Caribbean religion based on your your Yoruba, your Yoruba, this voodoo, and um, it itself. Yoruba, as I say, used to be only practiced in, in you know these faraway places. People would would say, but it is now. I mean, I discovered about five years ago. It's even in Scotland. Um, so that's kind of amazing how it's travelled so quickly um, in recent years. And so it's voodoo, it's saint worship, it's this syncretic religion. And there are now millions that, that follow this um, worldwide and certainly in Mexico. So, you know, they, they, they feel that they, they kind of a drew parallels between the Catholic saints and these African gods, these, they call them Orishas. Yep. And they kind of, it's almost as if they blended them into, into one, they, they they saw them as being the same type of thing, and so they blended it together. And in in Santeria, the Santeros, the, the practi- practitioners, believers, they will consult priests that are called the Babalus, and there is temples with priests and priestesses there. And as I say, they associate Catholic saints with the Orishas, so there's that blend. But you have uh, divination going on, you have the black magic um, healing, the, the, the potions, the dancing, the drums, the rituals, and yes, sacrifices. So they have the usual kind of thing you may associate with, with witchcraft, like, you know, they will wear amulets, they will have herbs and potions and so on, but um, the centurials will go into a trance and become like a medium for the group's particular orisha, and they will channel that and give messages to uh, the congregation. Now, there is animal sacrifices involved sometimes, and a, f- a friend of mine, Ivani Greppi, originally from Brazil, she was into Yoruba when she was in Brazil. She knows a lot about it. And, and she said, you know, it's really eye-opening how our cultures across the world are opening up more to these practices. For example, Beyonce practices Yoruba. Um, it's the same as Santeria. It's the same as Umbanda or Candomble or Quimbanda. In other countries, basically voodoo, it's the same as in Africa, it's the same practices, um, channeling the same types of spirits and, um, you know, and yet a lot of folks don't actually realise that. So, as I say, when you've got people like Beyonce channeling um, uh, Yoruba deities and so on, it's it's not surprising that um, I've discovered it's popped up in Scotland about at least five years ago. Yep. And... Yeah, so very big in Cuba as well, and, and it can, as I say, you can trace it back to Africa. So it, it's like there's a lot of Catholicism there where they are adding black magic into the beliefs. And Santeria is not a secret cult, although it definitely is a, a cult, but it is not a secret. It's really quite open. It wouldn't be in the UK and it wouldn't be in the US, but there it, it is really quite open. And in some places, particularly in Cuba, um, it can even take place in a Catholic chapel. The, the, the priest can be doing the Mass while these other Santeria worshippers are, are doing their channeling. Now, that's not common, but it does happen. However, the, the Vatican, the Catholic Church, has um, denounced Santeria and also Santo Merto and, and called them what they are, um, cults. Uh, and the old cult, but it's interesting, depending on the country, they can be accepted um, within Catholicism or not. And um, I saw an article when the Pope had visited Cuba, he actually went to the the Virgin in Santiago to the shrine there, and people were joking, saying maybe he was actually at the Santeria shrine because it was right beside it. So... Um, wow. Yeah, we all know how the uh, the progressive pope is. I mean, like uh, he's definitely not a Christian, definitely not a man of God. That's for sure. And I truly believe, um, and the guys on uh, IC TV the same way, we truly believe nine nine point nine percent that Pope Francis is the end times false prophet that the Bible speaks about. Uh, but you know, I mean, you're seeing all the stuff that he's doing, condoning that a man of God would never ever do. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I would agree. Um, I mean, I don't know if he's the end-time false prophet, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me, really. Um, so, yeah, I know, I know what, what you're saying there. Um, so the, the other big death cult in Mexico is called Santa Merta, and that's another cult rejected by the government and, of course, the Catholic Church yep. uh, on, the most, on the most part anyway. It's far more popular than Santeria. Um, both of them, uh, I do consider them both quite um, dark, let's say. So Santa Merta means holy death, and she is the skeleton saint and the fastest growing religion um, in Mexico and Central America. So, you know, they, they say that this she's also now become the, the main saint at the Day of Death, Day of, Day of the Dead celebrations, and some say she is the reincarnation of the Aztec goddess, the main Aztec goddess, the Lady of Death. And again, with, with this one, there's it blends ancestral worship with Catholicism, voodoo, um, and she, along with that Katrina skeleton we mentioned earlier, is often represented quite heavily at Day of the Dead. She is dressed in robes and veils, quite like the Virgin Mary, actually, um, but she carries a, a scythe. So she looks very much like the Grim Reaper. And again, she is this skeleton saint, so you see her skull, and it, it does look kind of eerie. So... I got a picture of her right now as you're speaking. It's on uh, the graphic I made, but um, I got a picture of her right here. Exactly who you're talking about. Yep. So, you know, Santa Merta followers will say, for example, um, we're not really worshipping death. If anything, um, Europeans kind of ignore death or, or um, you know, don't talk about it much, but by embracing death, we are actually free to live our lives without fear or anxiety. Um, they feel that she's the, the, the patron saint of death, and although she was, the, the Mexican government tried to suppress the growth of Santa Merta, they failed. She is said to be the, the, the saint of delinquents and outcasts, and I, I'm quoting this from a BBC broadcast, actually. So, you know, many Mexicans who feel that the, the political and religious leaders have let them down, the economy has let them down, they will turn to Santa Merta for help. So on the one hand, she's regarded as the patron saint of criminals, prostitutes, drug addicts, and, and so on, um, drug traffickers, gang members, and so on, but also the common everyday person um, now looks to her. Many will wear her tattoo on their body, they believe gangs will worship her, um, criminal gangs, they feel that they, they wear her tattoo for protection, they feel that she will protect them from death, And but you know, it is, it's not a religion, it is a very much a, a syncret, syncretic cult, the, the old cult is involved, um, and she does personify death. It's been around since... People think about 1965 it began to appear in Mexico, and um, but it's really, really spiralled greatly. Um, it's now very, very popular there, one of the fastest uh, growing spiritualities there. Uh, mostly people under their 30s, they say, are attracted to it, yep. and not just people who are the ordinary person, not just criminals, not just cartel enforcers, but also the police. It's like people on both sides of the law will worship her because they feel she will protect them. And, you know, the, the, the Catholic news agency actually said this is not um, a religion, it's far from it, it's unholy. And they have said Santa Merta is literally a demon with another name, that's what it is. So, but they recognise that some people, especially perhaps criminals, they feel awkward asking God to protect them. So they feel Santa Merta is more forgiving in a way, she's more understanding um, and that she will forgive them. So I've got a few quotes here from her followers. You know, someone who had 
been in prison, should have been in prison for 15 years, was released after one year, and he put this down to um, a miracle from this Santa Merta. Um, often people will have their, for example, go to a midnight rosary service at their local chapel, Catholic church, and then come from that and go to a shrine dedicated to the Santa Merta. It used to be really quite clandestine and secretive, but it's not hidden anymore. And, you know, another follower has said that she is a part of life and she protects those who no one else will. She's an angel God created and each person can ask what they want of her. It's sad when people use her for evil. Now, I thought that was contradictory. If she's meant to be good, why could you even use her for evil? You know, um, It's a bit like people say there's a difference between white magic and black magic, when really there isn't. So, yeah, again, many who are involved in it see Catholicism and Santa Merta as complementary. They, they actually feel it's two different ways of worship, worshipping the same God. Um, and I did send you some, some photographs of, of people there at, at the altars and so on, and, and people will give the usual kind of offerings, like, for example, fruit or, or, or flowers or candles will be burnt at the altars, but people will even give um, a marijuana joint or a, or a glass of tequila or, or whatever because that's what they can afford or that's what's special to them, so, so they give this offering to this um, saint death. So she's even come to rival the Virgin of Guadalupe, which is the, the country's most famous saint. So often in shops, you will see both statues or, or figurines sold side by side. Um, so uh, she does look kind of gruesome, I must say. Um, but a few people have, have also, in the article I read, warned about it, who practiced it. And um, one guy who, who, who does practice it actually said, be, be careful because it gives to you, yes, but it also takes away. So he's obviously been doing it long enough to realize that um, not everything in the garden is rosy with this saint. Um, someone else, Maria, a, a taxi driver, she said she once worshipped Saint Amerta, but she began to feel controlled by it and she decided to stop. Then her brother, her son-in-law and her uncle all died. Car accidents, illnesses and so on happened. Now she said, I know it's her, I know she did this. Now I see her all the time. When I try to sleep, she comes into my room and she warned people, be careful. Once you do let her in, she won't leave. So there's someone who obviously, again, was in it long enough to see the, the evil side of it. Yeah. You know what she reminds me of? Because, um, you know, we know about the, you know, spiritual warfare in the past and all that. Uh, reminds me of uh, another name, another form of the so-called goddess Isis, which is Semiramis, you know, from Babylon. And it reminds me of the same exact aspects that she taught, of course. Like, we know when the Babylonian religion, you know, split up, they called the same gods and goddesses different names, but they were actually the same people. And uh, it reminds me of that, and also when the fallen angels before that, you know, brought their ancient, you know, their so-called ancient knowledge to other countries and everything. And uh, there's a lot of stuff involved with that. But um, it reminds me a lot of uh, Isis, uh, this uh, so-called uh, queen of death here. Yeah, I know, and I, and I find it interesting that, you know, whenever um, certain cults are, are brought to our attention, or even when new ones um, are born and start to go around the world, that often when we look at them and the, the, the deities, the so-called deities, the so-called um, figureheads of them, that they will indeed have similarities with a lot of um, figures from past generations going right down to ancient times and their so-called gods or goddesses or spirits so it's like there's nothing new under the sun spirits will repackage themselves as it were they as the bible says satan himself can masquerade as if he is an angel of light yeah spirits can do that spirits can masquerade pretending to be goddesses pretending to be dead relatives ancestors pretending to be angels and so on when 
they're clearly not. <coughs> Excuse me, and I will um, explain it in a moment why um, we believe that they're not. For, for those who, who are listening that maybe haven't heard our, our shows before, but before I get to that, um, I'd like to also talk about the the Mexican witchcraft markets. Yes, I was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> About the markets yeah. and selling bones and everything else, tra human trafficking of bones and uh, all kinds of disgusting stuff they sell. Absolutely. Um, and as you know, Dan, the Mexican witchcraft festivals and markets attract people worldwide. They are among the most popular worldwide and, and continue to be a huge tourist attraction. And, you know, the, the numbers of people who visit there is just growing all the time. Excuse me. So the one of the main, main well-known ones is called Mercado de Sonora. And there you can buy the exotic, the illegal and the mystical. It is a place where sorcerers, shamans, healers and fortune tellers, just folks from a whole um, host of, of occult backgrounds, will go to buy um, products and spells, but also will sell their wares at this place. So, and, and you know, again, it's hard, it's easy for people to judge and point the finger and say, oh, that's that's really dark or that's dangerous. But in, in hard economic times, many Mexicans are turning to these things. They feel abandoned, as I said earlier, by, by politics, by the church. So they turn to witchcraft. Um, so this Sonora market in Mexico City, since 1959, it's been known as, as the Sorcerer's Market, but you can basically buy anything there, um, including you, you can visit the sorcerers there and, and pay for them to remove curses that other sorcerers has, have put on you. So, <laughs> you know, you can go there for anything. It's a huge place, over 10,000 square metres, 500 plus stores, about 20,000 or more tenants and workers, about 10,000 visit daily, but of course more at Halloween. And yes, you can buy the usual religious figures like um, uh, the Virgin Mary or, or a, you know, a figurine of Jesus and saints and so on, but you can also buy the Centuria Gods um, and the Santa Merta uh, figurine itself. There's the usual kind of a herbs and so on are, are sold there and love potions and amulets, magical rites. But in recent times, they've even, they're even selling, um, for example, Buddhas and Asian cats. So they're bringing in beliefs from other cultures, Chinese magic. But it, concerningly, the, there is the very dark stuff there too. You've got the Caribbean rituals of Palo Mayombe and ceremonies that do require actual sacrifice of live animals. So the concern is people who are maybe just, say, a new ager or, or consider themselves just a white witch, for example, could go there looking for something but end up in a very dark realm, as if that's not dark enough, but a really dark realm because the darker stuff is there, it is open, it is not hidden, it is not secretive like it used to be, it is very much out there. Um, for all to see, and as you know, across Latin America, there's a lot. You know, there's a lot like that where things are not hidden. You could go to the capital of Bolivia, La Paz, and see dried llama fetuses hanging from the market uh, stalls to be used in, in, in witchcraft. Sorry, Dan, you were going to say something. Oh no, yeah, when we was talking about it, uh, it was going actually when you first started. Um, anyway, but um. This relation to uh, what was going on, and uh, I don't want to throw you off subject, but um, it, you know, when you get a chance, if you want to get to this, um, you mentioned uh, when we were talking that a demon appeared to you when you arrived in Mexico. I just want to know what happened. Uh, what was the result of that? Oh yeah. Um, basically, um, we got when we got to Mexico, we were staying in a Airbnb. It was basically just one one little room um, that that we had there. And it was right between the two large Catholic cathedrals that were hundreds of years old. And one of them was, uh, it used to be a Jesuit college. So that's where we were staying. 
um, for about four days. And yeah, a demon appeared. It did not hang around long. It just came in the room and looked at me, but you know, it left before even I got a chance to pray, it, it left. But I wondered why it was there. And by the end of our five weeks there, I thought perhaps it was because maybe it knew that, you know, we were going to be speaking at that church and that, that those people were going to be set free from demons. And, and maybe it knew I was going to interview Maria, who came out of Santeria. Maybe it didn't know any of that, but it just... <laughs> It knew it was. It knew I was coming from God. Put it that way, and it wasn't very happy about it. Yeah, especially um, people like yourself. I mean, you have that uh, Holy Spirit with you, and they abhor that. You know, the Holy Spirit when they see it in people. That's why it fled. You didn't even have to say a word to it, <laughs> and it then fled when it seen you because it was blinded by the light you carry with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, well, well, that's what I thought. You know, I, I was about to pray or, or pray in tongues, and it, it just walked out the door again. Uh, praise God. So, but, but yeah, and I, I find that often when you go to a new place, not necessarily even a new country, but just a new place, especially if there is witchcraft around, sometimes you can and, encounter a demon that um, obviously belongs to that area, as it were. Yep. So, but in the name of Jesus, they, they leave. Amen. And while you're on demons, uh, what did the Mexican pastors tell you about the growth of Christianity and be, uh, people being free from demons? Sorry, I missed that, Dan. Uh, while we're talking about the demons, um, what did the Mexican pastors tell you about the you know the huge growth of Christianity rising up and people being freed from these demons? Yeah, well, um, I was told Arthur Perales, who he was great, he translated for us. Um, he explained to me that, you know, on the one hand, you have obviously the growth in, in these cults and so on, but there is also um, a growth of Christianity. And, um, yeah, that, that they're seeing more people becoming Christians. They're seeing more people now who are being set free from these cults and so on. So, obviously, we can see that, that the Lord, the Holy Spirit is bringing people to himself, he's bringing them out of these cults and so on, um, which is wonderful news to hear. Absolutely, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like, every time there's bad stuff, good stuff rises from it, you know what I mean? And, uh, so that's the good part about it, because sometimes it takes people to fall on the face to understand and realize that, you know, there's a creator and that's the only way out is through the creator, you know what I mean? And like, you know, myself, I mean, I was born into Catholicism, I turned away because of, you know, the lunacy that goes on in the church, yeah? And um, I got involved with the occult and, like, a dummy. And God led me back into understanding the Bible on its own instead of through religion. So that's, you know, what happened with me. And, um, you know, that's what happens to a lot of people. And, yeah, and it's funny, too, because most people you talk, I talk to anyway uh, that were, were involved with the occult or just fell away and became atheists, 99% of them are all former Catholics. So there's a trend going on here that I'm looking at. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I don't know if that's the uh, same case with you, uh, but I mean, like, there's a real real war going on out there that's turning people away from the faith, and uh, most of uh, what I could tell so, from my experiences, it's uh, the Catholic Church that's turning a lot of people away from the faith. Well, yeah, and, 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 and other churches as well, the Protestant church. Yep. I mean, here in Scotland, we have one of the main churches here is, is called the Church of Scotland, yep. and that's a Protestant church. And really, um, <laughs> that would kind of put a lot of people off Jesus. I, I know that says an insulting thing to say, but really when you go to most of them, there is not the power of God. You're not really seeing Jesus power, you're not really seeing his love, you're not seeing the transformed lives. Absolutely. So it, it, it's a it's not a good representation at all of what Jesus is really like, what the New Testament is really like. So, yeah, and people feel let down, so it's only natural they're going to turn to other things, including witchcraft or the old cult. Yeah, here um, in America, I mean, like, uh, that's why I tell people follow God, not religion, because every religion, especially here in the United States, 
uh, key, especially the charismatic Christians are just as bad as Catholics, and um, they're, they're in the Assembly of God people and everything else. It's just a complete lunacy in half these religions out there. And um, I've seen people just come into church, seen people jumping up, like barking like a dog, and they run right out of there, <laughs> you know, because we know that's not of God, whatever, but um, it's the religions out there. I can't just blame the Catholic Church, uh, but it's all religions out there that equally take part, because no, none of these religions speak for God, you know what I mean? God is, you know, through his word, the Bible. But I mean, like... Um, you know, we talk about, you know, if we go back to Mexico here, I mean, are you planning on going back there? I mean, what's your, um, your mission now? Is it, you keep exposing this, and are you going back to Mexico? Yeah, I'm not hearing everything you're saying, Dan, but, but yeah, we are. Um, we are going to go back. We're going to go back next year again to and different areas of it, and, and I'm going to speak in another uh, church in another area um, from where we went this time. We didn't go to, this time we didn't go to any of those markets, um, but there's something else I wanted to, to tell you about that, and that's the witchcraft markets in Mexico. Um, you can also actually buy human bones, human skulls, or a, you know, a full human skeleton. Wow. It's just like, wow. Um, although it is illegal to sell human bones, again, it happens, and... You know, people might say, well, who wants to buy that? Well, medical students, but sorcerers will also want to buy them, um, particularly the, the Santerios who will use, for example, a hand, a, a complete skeleton, a finger, a skull, and people pay really good money for this. They can also buy crushed um, bones, which they call dust of the dead, that the Centuria magic will use. Now, the thing is, it's become, so, this shows you how popular Centuria and the death cults um, sorcery is in Mexico, because <laughs> they will actually, you might say, well, where do they get these skeletons from? Yeah, I was just gonna ask you that, where, where do they get these uh, remains from, the skeletons and bones? Exactly, well, you know, on the one hand, you could say, well, Perhaps, uh, and obviously we don't know for sure, but perhaps this is from um, people involved in criminal activities, people involved in, for example, you know, the trafficking and so on. Maybe it's from there that thousands of people that, that have been killed by the cartels, maybe people who have been kidnapped, maybe, uh, you know, these corpses have ended up there. We don't know, but it's very possible. There was a film on... Um, TV about 2004, Man on Fire, the main character, actor, Denzel Washington, he played a character um, who was involved with chasing down their her Hermandad cult, and they were a cult, they were a cartel, they, they kidnapped people, and so you, you don't know, I mean, you don't know, but what we do know for sure is that cemeteries across Mexico very readily will sell skeletons to people for these markets. So Whoa. you're talking the ordinary graves, people's family, you, you know, your, your dead relatives are dug up um, and sold. Santerios will, se will sell them, will buy them rather, and then sell them at these witchcraft markets. Um, that is just, <laughs> just really quite creepy, isn't it? So, yeah, you know, is. it's got to the stage, and, and you might say, well, that probably Laura's just picking a, you know, really extreme example, and that's not that common. But in actual fact, it's very common in cemeteries across Mexico. Um, although it is illegal, it happens, and it's got to the stage where it's so bad that ordinary people can now go to their cemetery and ask for... The, 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 the corpse of their dead loved one to be exhumed just so they can check it's still there and you're allowed to do that once every seven years just to check that your relative is still there in the grave. That's pretty sad that people have to actually do that, you know. So it, it, there's a big problem in there. I'm surprised this stuff don't happen in the United States, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, it may be and it's just not, you know, not, not to that level or, or not, um, you know, 
broadcast yet, but you know, even in the Mexican Constitution, Article 280 talks about about that, and it says that you know, um, people who are caught um, violating a burial mound, a grave, or a coffin, desecrating a corpse, uh, using it for necrophilia or uh, other reasons, can be imprisoned from up to a couple of days to a couple of years, but. Although it's a criminalised offence, sentences are usually bailed and it is just not considered a serious enough crime and that's why it is a, a common happening in Mexico cemeteries. It's pretty much ignored um, that it does go on. Oh. And, 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 you know, it, it just shows you, as I say, the, 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 the supply and demand, doesn't it? You know, it's... <laughs> People want it, the, the, the sorcerers and, and so on, the centurials, they want these things, so um, supply and demand really says it all. And the BBC sent a, an interviewer under plain cover pretending to be a um, medical student and asking for a skeleton. He went to a cemetery, he asked for one, and he was taken to a secluded area of the cemetery and basically shown... Um, shown a skeleton that he could buy and he saw things around the area that did look like Santeria candles and, and um, artifacts and so on. So, yeah, that's just how common it actually is. So I'm thinking as well, Dan, you know, if witchcraft markets in Mexico are the most popular in the world. Wow. People, people who are going there may be only going for a bit of fun or, or, or a little, you know, new age... <laughs> amulets or something are going to end up seeing this stuff skulls and skeletons hanging and the Santeros um, and the, the death cults that are there it's just like wow the floodgates are opened now um, for people to look at things they've never saw before and maybe even experiment in it because these guys are there they, they, they will sell you magic spells and so on that's crazy like so it's basically it's a <laughs> Uh, uh, cultism uh, uh, flea market, if you want to put it that way, or uh, moral, you know, it's kind of crazy. Well, yeah, and that's the thing, apparently you can buy anything there, you can buy, you know, um, Adidas trainers, or <laughs> you can buy anything, and yet you can buy all that stuff as well. So, well so, um, what was it like, I mean, when you walk into there, I mean, was it like a culture shock to you? Uh, you what was, what was your mindset at that point? You walk into the, this market, seeing all this stuff like this. Well, um, as I say, we didn't go to a market this time, um, so we didn't see that. But we certainly heard about it, and what it was a culture shock just to see all across Mexico. Um, we were there for five weeks, and we travelled, you know, different areas. It was a culture shock to see all the. Um, Santa Merta figurines and the, the Saint Death and the, this, you know, the skull, the skeleton that they worship and the um, the Katrina skull and skeleton as well, to see all of them and everywhere you went there were these brightly coloured skulls now in themselves they didn't look particularly gruesome but, it, but you knew that it's what they represented and the fact that many, many Mexican families will have that type of thing in their home whether it's just as a, as a cultural icon um, or whether for spiritual reasons. So that was a bit of a culture shock. Wow. And I know, so, a lot of the, you know the Bible, I'm trying to find the verse I could quote it exactly, but um, it warns us about people who, you know, put their kids through the fire for sacrifices, practicing divinization, witchcraft, and... Um, uh, communicating with the dead, spiritualism with the, you know, the medium stuff and everything else. And, and I mean, the Bible strictly warns uh, people about doing this. And uh, before you, um, you know, before you go, I wanted to uh, get your take on something too. If, when you're done with this subject here, I, I got a couple of questions to ask you about uh, this new garbage going on in the churches now called uh, Christian yoga, Christian witchcraft. I um, mean, uh, they're bringing the devil's... Um, garbage into the churches and uh, putting a Christian stamp on it. Christian yoga, yeah, um, I don't believe that, you know, it can be Christian at all because yoga 
if you actually ask the, the yogis themselves what it's all about, they will explain, you know, that there's people into Hinduism, Buddhism, they, um, they do yoga, they do meditation, but they do believe in these yoga, uh, these Hindu gods. So yoga is not seen as something like exercise to them. It's seen as something very spiritual. And when I was in, in the New Age, for example, other mediums I knew told us to do yoga because they said it helps you open your chakras to spirits, open your being to spirits and higher vibrations and so on. Um, you're inviting the, these um, demons into your life and people might think that's extreme but it's just a fact. When I uh, came to Jesus and repented for a lot of occult stuff I had done, one of them was yoga and much to my surprise I actually, demons came out of me that were yoga demons you know and uh, that literally wriggled me like a snake oh, the which, is, the it, Kundalini. which isn't surprising when they talk about the Kundalini serpent yep. and all of that in yoga yep the Kundalini yeah. spirit yeah. the serpent spirit yep so but like you had said there Dan um, you, were, you were talking about a scripture uh, Deuteronomy 18 the scripture that, that does warn, where God warn people about divination yep. and witchcraft practices and, and so on. Um, so, you know, when I think about Mexico and the dear people there, and I think about how death and um, trying to commune with the dead and so on is such a prevalent thing in their culture. You know, I, I, I was thinking at the time, you know, why, in a sense, I would love to say to them, why talk to or try and pray to the dead. It's a demonic deception. The dead can't hear you. They're either in heaven or hell. They can't hear you, so when you try to speak to the dead or, or these deities, these spirits and so on, it's demons who will respond. Um, demons can pretend to be your dead family. They can pretend to be Moses, Elijah, the Virgin Mary, Catholic saints, yep. whatever. They can pretend to be angels. Um, Familiar spirits, be... yeah. They look familiar. And I got the verse right here. It's um, Deuterometry chapter 18, verses 10 to 12. There That's shall be yep. not found, am found among you anyone that makes a son or daughter pass through the fire, that sacrifice, or uses divinization, observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter of familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that, those who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. So, um, like that, I mean, the Bible gives strict warnings about that. That sounds very severe to me, man. <laughs> it is. It is very severe, very serious. And, you know, a lot of folks, I think, as well, when they're involved in those things, or perhaps they've been brought up in Catholicism, um, I would ask them to stand back and look again at Jesus with fresh eyes, because... Whilst you're trying to talk to the dead or these saints or these spirits or, or these gods, talk to Jesus. Number one, he is not dead. He's still alive. He died on the cross, but he rose again from the dead and he is alive in heaven. And that's what you're gets not, me. You you're, know, you're not talking to a dead person. Jesus is alive and he is God. How much better can you get than talking to him? Absolutely, and that's what gets me, Laura. Um, when I talk to people, and you know, Catholics and um, other parts of Christianity, right? I'm like, what? Here's the thing, right? If you if you own a company, right? If you work for a company, I'm sorry. If the head boss, usually when you gotta go through a chain of command through your manager, or supervisor, and so on, but if your head boss comes to you, gives you your his personal cell phone number, and says you have any problems, you contact me direct. Don't go through middlemen. That's what Jesus does. He says, you don't need no middleman. I am the only mediator between a man and God. So why would we have to pray to saints? Why would we have to pray to relatives or Mary when we have the boss's number on the speed dial? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. That's a good description. I yeah. That. Yeah, because like, yeah. I, mean, I mean, he says it so many different ways. Like, you know, only through me, you can get to the Father. I mean, like, uh, I mean... It's just um, the New Testament alone. I mean, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I mean, I don't know how many times he says these things. And people still in these churches today 
rather you know care about what the pastor or priest says other than looking for themselves when they see it clear as day and you don't even need to interpret it it's clear as day totally you know and, and people who i think a lot of catholics for example might not realize that the book of hebrews and the bible emphasizes jesus as our high priest yep. you can't you know if you're into priest he is the high priest you cannot get any higher than him he is our redeemer and he only through the blood of jesus can our sins be washed away Amen. not through praying to saints or or doing these rituals or um witchcraft or, or anything only the blood of jesus can wash away our sins and so you know anyone who who listens to this and who's maybe been involved in these things or 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 similar things similar types of witchcraft or, or whatever whatever darkness you've been involved in i would like to really emphasize emphasize that jesus loves you and he is the only one that can save your soul and satisfy your soul you may even be very religious and do all these daily prayers and rituals and so on but is jesus really your personal savior he is the one that you can trust and trust alone for your eternal salvation all these other spirits and so on are actually false gods the bible calls them false gods false spirits yes they can do miracles yes they can do healings but these are false false miracles that come from demons that come from satan and they will lead you to hell jesus is the answer and he wants you to come to him today to be with you through the rest of your life to bless you to to help you overcome whatever challenges come into your life he can overcome them you don't need magic spells to overcome things and he will be with you forever and more importantly even than that he will take you to heaven when you leave this earth that's what i would love to say to anyone listening to this today absolutely and uh first timothy chapter uh yeah first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 says for there is only one god and only one mediator between man and god the man christ jesus christ you know the savior and uh so i mean like that, if that's not clear to people that go to the churches, what is? You know what I mean? How much more clear proof that you want um, to say that you don't need to pray to saints or any of these things or your people, your red dead relatives of Mary. It, Jesus says clearly as day, I mean a 12-year-old could fully understand it, that you only pray to him. You know what I mean? That, I, I, I can't for the life of me, uh, unless it's some kind of mind control going on in these churches or something, but uh, I can't, for the life of me, people still are asphyxiated with uh, praying to saints and Mary and dead relatives. I mean, like, and when it says in their own scripture that, you know what I mean, it's un it's unreal. But, you know, they rather listen to the catechism or the watchtower or some other doctrine of a devil than other than what the Bible has to say. Yeah, and, and I think it's really sad, but I think it shows you the, the, the um, significant impact and, and influence that a particular culture will have on a whole people group you know whether it's today cultures of today or cultures of ancient times that, that we saw in the bible you know even moses had to warn um the people about occult practices of, of their neighbors because a neighboring culture was doing it it's so easy to fall into what another culture is doing and it's so easy to trust what your leaders say um rather than look at the bible um, for yourself and I was certainly guilty of that as you were Dan and it amazes us when we still see that happening but we also we know that just how deceiving um, these demonic deceptions are to people um, so you know but, but praise God for this show Dan and, and that people may listen and the Holy Spirit shows them the truth and, and removes that uh, spiritual deception from, from them Absolutely, and uh, one verse comes to mind all the time when we talk about stuff like this. Uh, Hosea 4, 6, my people destroyed by the lack of knowledge because they chose to reject the truth. And he's talking about the people uh, that go every Sunday to worship him, that they yeah. lack the knowledge. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's unreal. And, uh, there's... Absolutely. And, and like you were saying as well, Timothy talks about in the last days, um, 
believers will turn from the faith and look to doctrines um, taught by demons and, and we're seeing that we're seeing a lot of new age and occult stuff creeping into churches now and um, yeah believers are getting into it um, not realizing what they're doing or, or maybe not even caring sometimes because it works so they'll try it <laughs> Exactly, and I got some people commenting around different things here, and I want to explain to people quick here because uh, people need to understand because uh, they automatically think because you believe in the Bible, you believe in Jesus as Savior, they automatically think you're uh, you belong to a religion. But people need to understand because the society today likes to confuse people. Religion is not of the Bible. Bible is not religion. The Bible, Jesus Christ, and God are not religion. Jesus warned us against. That's why all religions hated him. That's why they wanted him dead. He was a rebel against all religions. When I say I believe in uh, the Bible, God, and uh, Jesus, that's not a religion. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Catholic. I'm not none of that stuff. I believe in the faith. I don't believe in any religion because Jesus warned us about religion in so many different ways. And religions, every one of them are guilty in misinterpreting the Bible purposely for control, to put people against each other for uh, political agendas and everything else. Um, and as you can see, all over, I mean, people, especially like Laura, that know real well what I'm talking about because religions are destroying people's faith. Uh, and if you look at what's going on in the world right now, when I mentioned the Pope earlier, Every religion is conforming to the ecumenical movement headed by the Pope in the United Nations. Muslims, uh, top-level Christianity, they're all conforming. Uh, every religion in the world is conforming to this one-world global false peace religion. And that's what the Bible calls the end times. Uh, that's a false prophet. Brings the world to a one-world religion. And uh, you know the UN brings us to one-world government to bring in the Antichrist, the false messiah. So uh, people need to understand this guy, uh, Colin Gardner, commented about that. Um, I... You know, you need to understand there's a difference between religion and God. A huge difference. And I think as well, Dan, people might hear what you said there and think that's absolutely crazy. But it's not. You know, when I was in the New Age, um, a lot of us were taught that um, Lucifer was God. Lucifer is the one that is the head of all the world religions, all the spiritualities. And at the end of days... At the age of Aquarius, Lucifer will gather all together to worship him, that he is the real saviour, uh, that it is not Jesus, it is not the Bible that's the truth, but that Lucifer is the truth. Um, so the, the, that's New Agers were teaching that. They were even saying what you just said. They didn't call him uh, the devil. They believed that he was still Lucifer, that Krishna's got it wrong by saying he became the devil. But any of these so-called spirits that channel messages like that, when you confront them at the name of Jesus, they show their true form as being a demon. Any of these new age um, spirits, gods, deities that channel that type of information, and a lot of them will channel that. A lot of them will say to you, you can have whatever god you want, whatever spirituality you want, but but renounce Jesus Christ. Why are they saying that if it's not true that he really is God? It's like so obvious. And and also, um, there's such a lot of historical proof Jesus Christ really did live the life the Bible says he does. There's archaeological proof, there's historical proof, but you wouldn't get that you know, in everyday media because they're not interested. It's Absolutely. not. It's not something they want to broadcast. Why not? Because again, they're not. They're not submitted to God. You know, they don't care. They don't want people to know the truth. They want people to to, to take the lie because the media is under power of Lucifer as well. Absolutely, and uh, I mean the media is the um, the forefront of lies. I mean they they want the ones who. Um, dictate what they take out and tell you know say to the public in other words if you want one flashlight they'll scare you enough to go buy a hundred flashlights and uh they are the um controllers uh you know the gatekeepers if you want to call them that they control the population to make them think and then plus and then you got the um the the schools the public schools that are involved with this as well um the education system i mean the media of all fronts i mean they really hit people hard on all aspects of life to deceive them from the truth Absolutely. It's, you know, everything is under it, and it sounds like a huge conspiracy to say that. Yeah. But you mentioned the UN a moment ago. The UN 
the Lucis Trust. The Lucis Trust is a spiritual organization that is worldwide. They believe Lucifer is God and they have representatives at the UN. They have representatives in all the top um, <laughs> institutions of the world, like as you say, education, so on, uh, the media and so on. The Lucis Trust the Lucis Trust has a finger in every pie. Um, why? Because Lucis, uh, Lucifer really is Satan. The Bible really is true. Jesus Christ really is the Savior. Exactly. They go out of the way purposely. They spend countless amounts of money. Uh, all this uh, propaganda they push forth to you know, purposely deny the Savior. To make them like, hey, listen, science, you know, with the... And it, it makes me uh, laugh, too, because what they teach in schools today, they call science and all that history, is nothing but watered-down garbage. And it's nothing, I mean, it's not real history, not real science at all. And uh, they say, well, science is God, basically. That's what they want uh, people to believe, that there's no God. It's just, um, you know, the evolution crap, you know, I mean, we always hear about. I mean, all that stuff's all mixed into the pot of deceiving uh -huh, people. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and folks might think we sound like huge conspiracy theorists but consider what we're saying and consider when the media when the media labels someone a conspiracy theorist i would actually stop and listen to what that person has to say i mean there as you know alex jones of infowars you used to work for him and as you know he has been just banned um from facebook you know, now he actually exposes a lot of these things we're talking about, like the Luciferians within government and so on. So why would they bother banning him if it was just nonsense? Exactly. <laughs> it's because they're frightened the truth's getting out, that's why. Exactly. For them to go out of their way to do all that, I mean, he, they're, you know, they're hiding something. They don't want uh -huh. the truth to come out. And uh, he's the one, basically, uh, Infowars fans are the ones who helped put Trump in the White House. And that's where they can't stand the most, because they dethroned Hillary Clinton. So, I mean, like, InfoWars fans, we almost put Ron Paul in the White House, but he got royally screwed by the, um, the Republican Party. So uh, it's like they know the positive effects that InfoWars is having. I mean, one of the biggest alternative media in the world. When I worked there, it was like the best six years of my life in the media. Uh, it was amazing. I still talk to the guys. Al Alex Jones actually called me a couple of weeks ago uh, to explain a couple of things that went on. Um, because um, you know, there was a lot of stuff that went on in the media. That's a whole subject for another time. But um, he was saying, too, um, in relation to what we're talking about, that they are coming after everybody. Uh, the social media, uh, the media yeah. techs and all that, media tech yeah. giants, that try to come after all of us. They're going to try to um, censor all of us. So I know any given day, my Facebook and my social media platforms are going to end up being shut down. So, yeah. um, you know, as long as God grants me the ability to reach out to people, and, and even when they do shut it down, I'm still going to open up another account. I'm still going to keep continue to do what I do. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that that's why I, you know, I have a website for people to go to. And the same thing with yours. And yours is uh, what? SpiritualQuest.com, is that correct? OurSpiritualQuest.com and my YouTube channel, Laura Maxwell X Spiritist. And, yeah, I would totally agree with you, Dan. You know, even when... Um, a few years ago when um, Obama was, was still the president there. Uh, remember the list that they brought out? They called it the list, and it was a list of uh, websites and so on that they wanted the public to know they considered dangerous conspiracy theorists. And, of course, Alex Jones was on that list, but there was also a few others, and they weren't all Christian either, but there was a few others on there that I know people who work for them and... Um, so on and, and yeah it was people who were exposing things like the the lucifer worshippers in the governments of the world in the top ranking companies you know <laughs> of the world exposing it for for what it is and no wonder um they try to censor them and bring them down and the bible says it will happen that truth will be uh, more and more hidden as the days get darker towards the end of the age um, towards Armageddon, we're going to see much more of this happen. So it isn't a surprise to us, but we do want people to know the truth. And if I could please pray um, in closing before we end the show. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and before you do that, uh, I'll give you information out. And uh, also check her book out, A Spiritual Quest Based on True Events. So, um, yeah, this is an awesome book. Um, I haven't got a chance to read it, but um, uh, the guys from uh, Now You See TV were telling me it's a nice book and everything else. And 
But uh, yeah, promote anything you got, uh, your website, and please de definitely uh, lead us out in prayer. And this is Dan yeah, Badandi for Truth that, Radio. That book, that book um, isn't in print at the moment because I'm updating it and I'm going to bring okay. it out uh, uh, like a refreshed, updated version. It's got more stuff added into it, basically. But there is another book. Um, it's a book by um, Jeff Harshberger. He was an ex-Satanist. He's been on a lot of TV programs in the US. And it's his testimony, my testimony in there, and other ex-occultists' testimonies are in there. Um, but, yeah, my testimony is it's been on TV, radio, worldwide. It's been in various books like that, magazines and so on. If people are interested in, in maybe reading it in Spanish or, or other languages, it, it's on my blog in various languages. Some countries in, in Asia, for example, have even put it on their TV um, where it was dubbed over in uh, Hindi and so on. So, you know, the, the Lord is using testimonies like ours, Dan, um, around the world um, to show people the truth of Jesus Christ. And, yeah, um, you know, I'm so grateful to, for, to you for having me on, on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure. I would lo love to, to, to pray for people just before we close. Absolutely. And when you uh, hang on the line when the show's over. So, so yeah, go whenever you're ready. And well, before we do that, uh, this is Dan Bedondi. You've been joining us on the Dan Bedondi Show, truthradioshow.com. Laura Maxwell from, uh, again, she's from uh, spiritualquest.com. We'll put all the links in the description. And uh, thank you, Laura. And uh, please lead us out in prayer. Thank you so much, Dan. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for the audience that heard it tonight and that will hear it later on YouTube. And Lord, just draw people to yourself, open their eyes to the truth. And anyone listening today who would like to make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior, please say a prayer like this. Heavenly Father, I thank you Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. Please come into my life and wash away all my sins with your precious blood. Please become my saviour and guide me throughout life. I thank you for becoming my saviour in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And I would like to say to anyone, if you have been involved in anything we might have mentioned today or any other dark practice, please after you've asked Jesus into your life, please seek a deliverance minister who can cast the curses from you, cast the demons out of you, so you will be totally free from spiritual possession and oppression and begin to live the life that God wants for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Declaring war on the New World Order, truthradioshow.com.